Welcome back everyone to Random Thoughts. Coming to you today with another Diamond Deck Breakdown in Rune Strike. This time around, we're going it solo. And we're talking about Faith, a deck that I was very excited for for a very long time. So let's jump into it. Have you ever wanted to channel your inner lawful good paladin? Here's your chance. In Faith, you have a lot of very interesting tools that aren't quite offered by most of the other cast, with maybe the exception of Ramses, and we'll bring that up again. But let's talk about Faith's blood ability. So first off, you have the obvious one in Conviction. Conviction is a four-cost blood ability that you gain one permanent attack. Now, this is a very subtle blood ability. You could, of course, conditioning for three mana and get the same effect, but that costs you a card and you're not guaranteed to see it. Whereas with a blood ability, as I mentioned in other videos, these are the most important thing in Rune Strike, bar none. And it kind of plays out here, as you'll see as we get to the deck list. Next up is Light Blessing, which was a recent change. Well, again, not really that recent, but A2 was changed for Faith, and it's now a three-cost blood ability. Gain shield equal to your attack. You can see the obvious interplay between A1 and A2, and there are going to be a number of cards that are going to show up in the deck list that are going to heavily leverage A2. Now, A3, however, is sort of judgment. Five blood immediately attack target minion. If it survives, it is stunned for one turn. Now, I personally was very excited about this blood ability, but to be perfectly honest, Part of it is due to the build, but it's very difficult to get this thing off. I think it is actually a very strong blood ability. It is underutilized, but the problem is it's underutilized for a good reason. You just can't generate enough blood in the course of a regular game in order to be able to A1 enough, sprinkle in some A2s, and then also A3. Just think about it. Right there, we're already talking about 12 blood, just activating each ability once. That's the entire game's blood generation, and maybe then some. A lot of games don't make it to the 13th, 14th, 15th turn, etc., and there are going to be some challenges along those lines. But let's talk about the cards, because there's a lot more to talk about with Faith. So here we are at the actual deck list, and I'm going to take a different tact here than I have in previous videos and just kind of highlight things rather than going card by card by card. As you'd imagine, everything is super focused on powering up your champion. It's either buffing your champion with attack, giving them some additional shield, or finding ways to stall out your opponent and ensure that your 7, 8, 9, 10 attack faith is just closing the game out with essentially unstoppable damage. Now... One thing I do want to call out is that 8, 9, 10 attack faith really shouldn't be happening if you're playing this deck. Realistically, you're probably stopping somewhere around 7. Now, that could be a combination of A1, conditioning, other effects, whatever it happens to be that boosts your attack. If you're going beyond that, odds are you either don't have the other blood abilities unlocked and therefore have nothing else to funnel the blood into, or... or you're just relying too heavily on A1. The utility of A2 is paramount, and that's why we see the presence of things such as Shield Bash. Now, Shield Bash actually is, has been exceptionally disappointing for me. The card just... It's too many hoops to jump through, but there are times where Shield Bash is the only thing that can get you out of scenario. You end up playing A2, and then you play a Brawler Shield, which we'll pull up for a moment, gain a bunch of shield, and then, oh, I'll shield bash that thing for like 14. Because you have to, because there happened to be an enormous minion that showed up on the other side of the board, and you have no other way to deal with it. Realistically, this deck, I think a lot of people fall into the trap of trying to make it too late of a game, as in you're trying to play 255 attack, and you're just never going to get there. That's why this deck, although it may seem on the surface that it's controlling, and it kind of is, you realistically want to be constantly pressuring. And that's why you have things like Warhorn's Blessing, or even just playing, as you'll see in some of the games, aggressive Zephyr Knights to continue putting on pressure, continue trying to close out the game. And then eventually you lock up the board or gum up the board in some fashion, and your champion is able to close everything out. Now, one of the... One of the other things I want to point out is the removal suite. Right now, we're running Ethereal Chains and Decimate on top of the aforementioned Zephyr Knights. And, of course, the somewhat lackluster Shield Bash. Now, you could con 
technically consider Horus a removal card. It often gets played as one. And Nemean Lion is more stall than removal. But point is, is that you have a variety of different ways to try and lock down the board. One thing I didn't mention, though, is Mass Incapacitate. And this card has been crucial. This deck in general is incredibly essence intensive. You really do need Decimate. You really do need Mass Incapacity. You really do need Horus and Nemean Lion and the Zephyr Knights and, and this and that. And to be honest, there are legendaries that are missing that I only recently unlocked, such as By Light's Grace, as well as Monastic Devotion. Although the latter I haven't tried at all or seen at all, so we'll see. But the point is, is that there's a variety of cards with purple and orange gems in this deck that honestly I don't know that you can run the deck effectively without. Maybe you could build a different Faith version, and that is certainly an option. But this particular build, and you still need more options that realistically don't exist. We'll talk about that when I get to the overall thoughts. One other thing that I want to point out is this particular version is very order-heavy. There's a lot of bluish border cards. Why? Restore order. Even though you're not a control deck, you are more tempo-based, slightly more aggressive, you do still need to keep fueling yourself. And the vast majority of cards in the stack are order intentionally by design. Now, as I mentioned, By Light's Grace and a number of other cards are light, not order. So you would probably need to replace this and rework the entire deck once those are acquired. And I think that it should be because those other ones are super important. Imagine having three conditionings. That doesn't sound impressive, but when you're ensuring that this is unstoppable, unblockable damage, barring camouflage, there's a lot to be considered. So that is a little bit about the cards. Let's talk about the deck as a cohesive whole. I'm going to kind of roll the alternatives into the overall section because, as mentioned, I try to avoid legendaries, but the problem is, is that this deck is legendary heavy. So I'm kind of excising that whole section this time around. Realistically, like I said, you want By Light's Grace, you want other light blood generators. There are some alternatives in order, and of course you could play Prince of Rags and Call the Weak or something along those lines. I had run those initially, and I wasn't really a fan. To be honest, I think that it it sets you up in awkward scenarios, although I could certainly get behind the idea of trying to just rework the whole thing and make the base of the deck look different. In fact, the Call the Weak Prince of Rags plan could work with this order-heavy build because they're order cards. But overall, Faith is, as mentioned, and as you can see up there, a solo deck or intended to be a solo deck. Whether that actually materializes and you get a 100% solo deck is, of course, a completely different story. We're going to need some more cards for that to really happen and have it be a viable Tier 1 competitor. Right now, I had a lot of difficulty climbing with Faith, and I think that it's just a matter of you, because of this faction combination, notably, you're missing Bright Song, at least in this configuration. It was in other versions, but you are lower or have a lower quantity of board clears. Even if you include Bright Songs or some of the other, you know, mediocre board clears, they're not as good as other realm combinations. Your removal just in general is not as strong, so that's why you constantly need to try and play to your strengths. Buff your champion, buy some time, gum up the board, and then that way you can close the game out. There are certainly ways that you could leverage the constructs from the previous season, whether it's War Barracks or the Priest one, and then that way, in either scenario, you're generating new bodies on top of providing a sturdy body, and either they're going to train and get insane abilities, or they're going to have protection and certainly buy you some time. This allows your champion to continue punching unmolested. The problem is, is that they are tempo negative, they take a turn to get going, so if your opponent removes them, a little bit of a problem there. And also, because of the costs in this deck, sometimes your hand just gets cluttered. That's why we ultimately elected to go with Celestial Palace. Plus, pulling into main or something allows you to both control the board and do some obscene things. Definitely have won some games on the back of that, or whatever random god happens to be provided to us. In general, I actually really enjoy playing this deck, but it can be frustrating because you certainly run into a lot of scenarios where you go, man, a Decimate would be really good here. Sweet, I drew it. And then a turn or two later, you're right back in the same position because you just don't have quite the same removal suite that other decks do. 
That's probably a good thing. But I think there is potential with faith, and I'd love to hear about builds that people have out there, whether it's this order-centric one, what changes you'd make to this, or if you went and included more light cards. But that'll do it for this time, everybody. So before we jump into some games, as always, thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and Black Lives Matter. Thank <laughs> you.